Okay. Thank you everybody for joining. I'm Michelle Lowe. I'm on the board of Elizabeth Foundation for the Arts. Starting in about May, because of pandemic, EFA building was closed. So EFA studio program have started a series of conversation as a way for us to connect with the EFA artists, member artists, and with our friends and patrons of EFA. Um, I have done a couple of sessions in the past. Today, I'm very delighted to have a virtual studio visit and conversation with Elizabeth Colombo. You, uh, she's been with EFA about three years, Elizabeth, right? Yeah, it's about, it's about right, three years, I would say. Yeah, yes. um, great. When I first saw her work, I think it's about three years ago during one of the EFA Open Studio program, I was very intrigued by the st storytelling in the work. And I know uh, since then, in the recent years, uh, her work has been included in a very notable exhibition at the Wallach Gallery in Colombia, uh, post-modernity. Post-modernity, yes. Post-modernity. And recently, your work also been included at the uh, Gracie Mansion. Yes. Uh, I think the work is still up. But it's still there, yes. Yeah, we can't really go, but... Unfortunately. You know, Unfortunately, but at some point we will, and there are some uh, installation photos we can share. Yeah. Um, Elizabeth, you have a very, I would say, a very international background. You were born in France. Yes. And grew up in Paris, should I yeah. say? Absolutely. And, and your parents are of uh, descendant of. Uh, uh, they are from uh, Martinique. Martinique. So they're from Martinique, or they they. Um, they, their grandparents from Matthew, or they're yeah. from, from Matthew, okay. Yeah. And you went to uh, art school during middle school or high school? And I went to a high school of art here in Paris and then did, pursued uh, uh, my, my studies there in art. And um, then I moved to Los Angeles and to, you know, be able to practice my art, but then I also work into the movie business for a while, mm -hmm. and then I moved to New York, and I'm in, and now I'm in New York. So yeah, it's a bit of a, you know, traveling agent, right? Yeah, here. yeah. So I feel, uh, in order for us to open up the conversation, yeah. I want to ask you this sort of uh, question. Um, also tell us, you know, that's a way for our audience to get to know you a little bit better within this sure. short period of time. Sure. So as you said, you, you know, you lived in several of, we, we really consider the most culture and um, for visual arts and cultural cities, metropolis cities, Paris, LA, and New York. And right now, particularly because of the pandemic and because of the race and racial injustice movements, we're really looking at the role of art and asking us questions about that. So I want to ask you, you know, from the, your experience in Paris, in LA, and in New York, what do you, uh, what's your uh, perception about people's response to your work and how, how people, how receptive they are um, of your work and uh, what's the art community like you know between these three places three cities well uh, I, I left Paris a while ago but at, at the time um, I think my work I was still really searching for the languages I wanted to put in and the narrative I wanted to put in my work uh, so it took me a bit of time to find out be, uh, when I was in high school or you know in, in art school it was not exactly the same language um, but within the years, I found out that in Paris, it was difficult for them to understand fully at the time um, my way of you know, rewriting history and putting a black character at the centers of, of, of my storytelling. Um, and when I moved to LA, again, it's, uh, it, again, I moved, and I moved from LA, I would say like, you know, eight years ago or something, but mm -hmm. the, the, I would say the playground for art and the, 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 the narrative that I had also was not really in, 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 in tune with LA at the time. Um, it, LA was more conceptual, 
more abstract. And obviously my work is figurative. So mm -hmm. it was not really the right place. But when I moved to New York, I think I found, you know, appears and people using the same language and understanding fully what I wanted to say. So I felt more comfortable here. Needless, but it doesn't mean that now it might be more re better received in those two cities, but at the time it was not. Well, that's uh, for those of us who chose New York to be our home, you know, it's, it's something that we uh, feel very close to and passionate about. And so I'm glad that you share the similar sentiment. There is a work behind you we're looking at that, yes. This so, one. Here. Yeah, this one. Is this, I understand your work actually uh, have several different theories. And is this from, could you tell us a little bit more about this particular work? Yeah, this one, I mean, I do, yeah, I do different sections in my work. I would say mm. it's something is uh, sometimes in, it's inspired by, either by allegories or mythology. Uh, biblical meaning feminine sacred and historical characters so a lot of my work is imaginative and sometimes they steep into a reality and this one is historical it's mm -hmm. um an interpretation of uh, phyllis whitley who was the first um, black woman to be uh, published as a poet um, she was born a slave and the, the, the own her owners decided to uh, learn her teach her how to read and write and find out that she was a prodigy with words and she obviously started to write created her own poems and um they freed her and she she got published and for like her story is a bit tragic because she died rather young mm -hmm. and like in her 30s she lost her her children as well so it's a bit of a tragedy but nonetheless she i think is um some sort of a right. trailblazer. Right, right. I remember reading about that uh, you know, in, in New York Times a while back. Um, now that we're talking about your different series, I think, let me share my screen so we can look at some of the works that you have. Okay, tell me if you can see it. I can see everything. All right. Okay, this is a nice photo of you okay. uh, work. <laughs> um, is this uh, is, is this at the uh, EFA or some other place this is here this is my studio right now oh in Harlem yeah. right yeah. Yeah, okay yeah. this is where you are in Harlem and I have another one this is EFA where you work at the EFA, EFA. It's, it's all right studio yes so I pull a couple of uh, image from like a signature image from different uh, series right and this is very striking and tell us a little bit more about you know the background and the character and stories behind it well this one uh, the title of this painting is daphne uh, daphne is is a um, um, mythology is a fable a greek fable and um, the story is about this woman who was pursued by um, Apollo, the god of love, mm -hmm. um, and uh, relentlessly, really, like he really was, because there was, a, I mean, it's a whole story, but there was a curse, and I'm, I'm going to try to make it short, there was a curse, and he was obsessed with her, and he was pursuing her, and the, the, as, as soon as she, he was trying to reach, he was about to reach her, to reach for her, mm -hmm. and to grab her, she prayed to her father and he changed her into a laurel tree so she could escape um, Apollo. So that's why you see her almost in the, in the wallpaper and the wallpaper is made out of you know, beautiful laurel trees and leaves and so she's almost you know, camouflaging in this. Mm -hmm. um, and the background is made of gold leaf and uh, it's a mix of gold leaf of an oil painting. And um, you see also in the, um, you see on top of the, of the table, of the side table, this, um, there, yeah, there is a statue uh, by Bellini, I believe, that is called the um, Ecstasy of St. Teresa, which was a symbol of the lust that Apollo had towards her. And also the ta the, uh, you see the, the pedestal of the, the table is um, in the shape of a, Lyra, I think that's the name of it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, which is also an attribute of Apollo. So it just gives you a hint of, um, it's, it gives you a hint of, of, of who she is and what is she in that position. So Ready? now, do you uh, use a real model for this? Form? Yeah, I usually, I, I use people, um, I use women, I mean, depending mm -hmm. on who I, I paint, but I use, I use models and they, they pose in the same pose I want them to, to be in my paintings. Obviously, I don't have this extensive wardrobe, which will be great, but I don't. Right, right. So I, you, I put them in clothes that kind of look like it. Uh -huh. uh, I actually have the same shape, and then I made it up. And this is the oil on canvas? This is oil on canvas, oil and good leaf on, cal on canvas. Okay, all right. Perfect. And uh, I want to go to this one here. This was uh, included in the Columbia University uh, Wallach Gallery exhibition, right? Yeah, it was Imposing Modernity, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, exploring black models in time of Impressionism and, you know, Matisse and Monet. And um, this particular model is um, Laure. Um, so the curator of the exhibition, Denise Morel, did an incredible work. Uh, searching for who she was because a lot of time when you see the Olympia you're more interested you're interested I mean your intention uh, is grabbed by the odalisk in front of you but not necessarily by the background and the background in the background you see this beautiful woman beautiful black woman you know uh, handing a bouquet of flower to um, the Olympia mm -hmm. and I wanted in my painting I wanted her to have center stage I wanted to, her to be featured and beautiful. Oh, sorry, uh, I wanted her to be featured and beautiful, mm -hmm. and um, and for you to be able to recognize who she was or who she is in the painting, I put different hints in the work so you can identify her with a model that is in the uh, famous painter of um, right. Okay. So okay. on the on the left hand side, you see uh, a man in a carriage. Um, holding a bouquet of flower, a bunch of flowers, which are the, the same flowers that you see in the in the, in the original the painting. actual original painting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. On the uh, on the right side, you see a black cat, which is also in the in the painting. Mm -hmm. uh, Laure is wearing, you know, a um, a head wrap, but also earrings, and the earrings are the same. The dress is, you know, the same color and has the, kind of the same pattern. And, uh, and also it's inspired, the way the painting is made is inspired by, you know, there is this famous French painting by Caillebot, which is a rainy day in Paris, and you have this beautiful pavement of, you know, cobblestone, which really was a bit of a paint to paint, but it looks good. <laughs> and, and the way also, uh, I, I thought that the way she had to go to Manet Studio, because I wanted her to be painted on her way to Manet Studio, she had to go through uh, the Parc, the, the, I think the Parc Monceau, like a, a, a Paris um, park, and you see in the background, these, these are the gates of, mm -hmm. of, the, of the park. But it's, it's also a reflection a bit on, um, you know, the women condition at the time. So you also see a triangle, you see the woman in the background with two kids, which mm -hmm. is the symbol of a nanny. You see on the right hand side, you see this gorgeous lady with, you know, magnificent pink gown, which wow. is supposed to be uh, this woman called Cora Pearl. Cora Pearl was a courtesan in uh, France at the time. And she had this uh, particular thing to dye her dog the same color as her dress. So that's why you see a pug. She had a pug and the pug is pink, so it's a way to recognize her. And also now you have Laure in front mm -hmm. being a model. So I felt like it was a good way of sum to summarize the possibilities of women at the time. They either have to be a nanny, a model, or oh. a courtesan. So that was also it's a reflection of how the condition of women at the time, of women at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a really striking work. And I like how the curator put it next to uh, Mikili Thomas' work, Absolutely. Modern Woman and the woman from, you know, um, the uh, Matisse, that genre, that era, that's a very interesting contrast. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, 
So this is something else you did in the historical uh, series, right? Yeah. This is, uh, uh, tell us more about this character. So this character is one of my favorite characters of all times. Her name is Biddy Mason, an incredible story. So she is a woman who's born um, as a slave. She is born in a family in Georgia, I think in 1818. And uh, I think around maybe 1847 or 1850, some, somewhere around that time, uh, the people she was with, they decide to move west. And um, she had incredible qualities. She was a medicine woman. She was um, a midwife. And she was, she was absolutely, she was very clever and, you know, actually uh, indispensable for the family. And the, her owner also had, I think, three kids with her. Obviously, it, it was not a love story. She had no choice, but that was that. So when they moved west, he made her walk behind the carriage with her kids the whole way through uh, California. Her first stop in Utah, because they were Mormons. And after they, they moved to California. But she was very clever. She found out that in California was a free state. Mm. So, uh, and that if you stay in the same state for two years, you were free. So she stayed put very patiently. And after two years, she claimed the freedom. She claimed her freedom. And of course, the owner said uh, that was not agreeing and, and wanted to move back east. And she decided to sue him. She sued him and she won. So after winning, of he, I think he left, obviously, disillusioned, and she opened her own business of you know, being, uh, selling herbs and healing people with the, everything she had, and she saved money, little mm -hmm. by little. And all the money she had, finally, she was able to buy a bit of land in, you know, in, in Los Angeles. And then she bought, she bought more land, and then a little bit more land, and it was the equivalent of downtown LA today. And then when there was a you know, uh, gold rush or whatnot, she was able to sell the land and she became a millionaire. Wow. I know. That's a fantastic incredible story. Incredible story. Incredible. Uh, actually, um, you know, there are so many of your work that I think is so fascinating. Um, I just want to show some of the installation and then link back to that story you had with the Cinderella film, that woman, I, now I sort of understand why you um, later um, with the Matt project, you choose Cinderella. I feel that there's some kind of <laughs> Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so this one is uh, what you currently have at the Gracie Mansion. No, uh, actually this one is the one before. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, now there's another there's another one on display, but this one was just the ex exhibition oh, that she persists, which was um, which was a, a, um, a representation of a hundred years of of one hundred women in the arts in New York, mm -hmm. and um, this one is inspired by um, the riots that happened in New York. I think in mean mid 19th century mm -hmm. um, known as the New York riots where a lot of black people were lynched and killed uh, during that time and um, but there was a place in Brooklyn called uh, Wicksville uh, where if you were able to get there you were safe so that's why I called the painting Haven and it was a symbolism for me of the fund founders of uh, that place in in New York uh, in New York State, and you see in the back, I mean, in, on the tree, I mean, you can't really see here, but in the tree, it's written Wicksville and the year it happened. And um, you also see like there's, there's a, a basket full of apple and there's, um, how do you call these animals that are jumping, that insects that are jumping and they're green? Locust, I think, uh -huh. it's locust, uh, where, it, and, and, and are they symbolize a bit, uh, like they're very ominous. So it was also a symbol of what's happened. And, and they're not looking at us, they're looking away uh -huh. to like basically the rumble in the city. So, yeah. Great, great. Um, so now I want to link back to uh, the Mason. Fantastic story. I link back to this other project you did. It's a, um, uh, with the Metropolitan Opera, where every is it every season, I think they invite visual artists to create a short film that's in 
correlation to whatever they're showing at the season. So you film and direct this short film, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to share that with everyone. Yeah. The music was from... Oh, there you go. Can we see it? Yeah. Can you see it? Okay. Great. Should I play it? Oh, oh, you tell us a little bit. The music is from... Uh... The, music, the music is from the opera. We had, um, we had you know, we, we, we had some guidelines that we had to put, which it had to be under two minutes. We had to feature uh, our personal work, but also had to uh, go with the story or interpretation of the opera. And we had to use some of the, some of the music they, they had. So with that, we were pretty much free. Great. Let's do it. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like we have so much uh, we can talk about, it, but because it's an Instagram format, we have a very limited. Absolutely. Yeah, I will, uh, you know, you have anything you like to tell us about, you know, with the pandemic and how you've been working at any upcoming project? That could be our nice closure for our audiences today. Well, I'm working right now on a large scale watercolor. So it's an ongoing project. I'm not sure where it's going to land, but you know, I, I would like to actually produce five of them. One is already in a private collection. So hopefully um, it will go well in that pandemic. But I'm working now on the studies because I'm not able to get to uh, the studio yet. But right. working on the studies gives me um, gives me a good idea of what the project will be uh, in the end, so. Well, best of luck. We're very much looking forward. Maybe we can do another follow-up, uh, you know, interview, because I feel like we, there's so much we haven't really <laughs> talked about. <laughs> we have to be very, very ambitious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I, I want to, you know, this is sort of a first one. I want to show, highlight some of your signature work. So let our audience to get to know you better. And the next time we can discuss some of the uh, different series in more details. Sure, my pleasure. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.